Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, oh Father. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes, praise the Lord, son. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God for everyone in the house today. Amen. We are here by the grace of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Demi's running on one hour of sleep, I think. Praise God. Amen. Praise God for everyone that would be online. Amen. That is joining in. Amen. I pray that the, the word bless you. Amen. That the Lord keep you. Amen. Praise God. Praise God for my wife. Amen. Doing a great labor with the household and the children. Amen. We praise God for the, the women that, that bear children and raise children up. It's truly the highest position that the Bible says to be, to be esteemed as a mother um, because of my God, until you, you, you become a mother, or you have a wife, you will realize when you become that, right? It's a, it's a great mighty work, but praise God for all the mothers, amen? Praise amen. God, amen, that we're here because of the mothers bearing, amen, children and raising them up and the mothers that are raising up the children not just anyway, but in the way of the Lord. Right. There is a, a labor with raising kids, yes. That gets another level when you're raising them for God. Mm -hmm. It's a whole nother level. Right. It's way easier to raise children up in the way of the world. You're going to have way less resistance given to what they want. Things will go much easier. Obviously, if you're in the world, you can cater to stress and anxiety with, 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 with different sources that men will say legal. But right, when you're living for God and you have to do all these things, you truly see it's all of the Lord, right? To have patience, grace, mercy, all the fruits of the Holy Ghost, and to be sober-minded while doing everything is a blessing from God. So we give God all the glory, but we honor all the mothers today, amen? And we thank God, amen, that God has brought us out of the darkness into his marvelous light, and that it's not just... Um, Amen. Any way that the mothers are raising the children, as I said, it's the ways of the Lord. Amen. So praise God for that, because God is doing a mighty work with the generation that is about to spring up forth from ours that we're in. Right. We look at the bigger picture, even here in Arizona, as it being a, an, an elder, as Elder Brian said, in its infancy stage of a truth. But yet the years that's to come, right, with Minister Deshaun. And his family coming and, and his children, right, baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost and his sons, right, that we see the bigger picture that God's opening up our understanding to. God sends the men out to plow and pave and do all this labor. But look at the generations that are raising up in the church that are going to be leading also. Amen. So there's a way bigger picture that God's doing and he's giving us the vision. Amen. Keep us in prayer. Amen. As we're going to be continuing to to do as the Holy Ghost says and to walk in faith and not by sight and and for the expansion of God's kingdom and, and the church of OCOJ on the West Coast. Amen. Keep us in prayer as, as God's growing us. Amen. And is going to expand the tents. Amen. And the doors to be open and for more souls to come and gather. Amen. Praise God for everyone that would be online, either in Phoenix, Tucson, wherever you may be. Amen. We encourage you to as the Bible says, don't forsake the fellowship of the saints. Amen. The fellowship, if it's only within reach of digital technology, praise God. Amen. But if there's the capability of having physical, amen, to not overlook that and, and to come, there's a strength and there's a blessing that only God can do when we do that. Amen. When we right. gather together, God does something in the midst of that by honoring his word. And then we, we get to be with each other. So I encourage anyone that's able to come. In Tucson, Arizona, for this campus, amen, I encourage you, amen, reach out if there's any questions or any needs, amen, as, as the Lord will allow, we can put everything together, and we'll get into the word, amen, as we opened up in prayer, I'll open up in another prayer for online, amen, thank you, Father, for another day, Lord God, we come before you, we exalt you, we give you the praise, honor, and glory for you and your word, oh Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for truth, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your anointing and your grace, oh Father, Lord God, open up the understanding to all of us, yes, again, Lord Jesus, and those who are online, increase the faith, Lord Jesus, that we wouldn't just be hearers, but also doers of your word, oh Lord, that we not add to your word, nor take away from it, as so 
many have sought to take away much of your word, and yes, they're adding many things to it, oh Father, to cater to flesh, to cater to carnality, to cater to just numbers, and cater to, to really money and following and fame, oh Father, Lord Jesus. Let that not be the testimony of us, Lord God. Let the testimony of us in your church, oh Lord Jesus, be that we aim to please you and to love you as the first great commandment, and yes, to love others also, oh Lord Jesus. Expose, Lord God, every every liar, every seducer, every soothsayer, Lord God, that is leading astray your people that really have a hunger and truth for you, Lord God, because those who truly hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. That is your word, O Father, and you are faithful. Lord God, continue to show those, Lord God, the way of truth, righteousness, and holiness, and that their mind and heart and body and soul be, might be made up to walk in that way, as we all must walk in the way that you have ordained for us to be in, O Father. Lord God, we thank you and we bless you, Lord Jesus, for keeping us. Lord God, bless every campus, bless main campus in their outside service today, O Father. Lord Jesus, and strengthen them, O Lord Jesus. Let your word go forth, Lord God, for those who didn't plan on hearing church service today, as them just going in their routine of, a, of their weekend, Lord God, let them hear, Lord God, every campus, and yes, main campus outside, O Lord Jesus. Prick hearts, Lord God. Lord God, break shackles, Lord Jesus. Overthrow the, the demonic realm, O Lord Jesus, of those in bondage to sin, Lord God, that they would feel your touch and your anointing, Lord God, and come unto you, O Father, and be changed and renewed. Repent and be baptized, Lord God, even filled with the Holy Ghost unto today, Lord Jesus. Lord God, that your truth would saturate and pierce through, Lord Jesus, the hearts of men, Lord God, to repent and be saved, O Father, and that you be glorified, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Speak to us, Lord Jesus. Speak to me and through me, O Father, as just a vessel, O God. I submit myself unto you, Lord God, and to every other man. Speak through them, O Lord Jesus, that you be glorified and we praise you. And that we love you, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're just going to go over, amen, as, as we here know and many in the, in the church know, amen, but the desire that the Lord put on my heart is to visit some scriptures again, amen, as there's many new souls plugging in online that aren't um, aware of the word. They don't know the scripture and the doctrine, right? They're coming to a faith in Jesus, and that's the beginning spot. Glory to God. You don't got to know it all. Amen. You ain't got to have it all together. Hallelujah. God says, come as you are, but he's going to do something to where you don't stay as you are. Right. Amen. And that not staying as you are is a beautiful thing, right? Because how we don't want to go and just go under any type of ministry, any type of preaching or teaching just to stay as we are. That's not the point. When you give your life to God, there's supposed to be a change and a change for the better now, the good now, and for that which is to come. Amen? But churches these days has gone far astray. Far, 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 far astray. We can see so many people will speak against those in truth. People will speak against those in error. We don't really care for those who would try to even say falseness or, 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 or things against even the ministry here in the leadership in OCOJ, amen, it's going to come. There's going to be mockers and scoffers and, and all these and blasphemers, yes, and then there's going to be those even within the Christian church and the professing faith in God that will come against those men who are prophets of a truth, right? And, and, and speaking of truth and doctrine of a truth. So whatever type of exposing video, amen, the exposing though that the Holy Ghost is going to do and wants to do is, amen, those that are in falsehood, those that are, are really taking things extremely far, right? We've talked about it before. Those, those of Michael Todd and we know all the big names that are obvious falsehood preachers, amen. Ain't no woman called to be a prophet, apostle, amen. Well, the prophetess, yes, the scripture does say a woman will prophesy, amen, and the prophetess, but as far as a man of God to, to, to speak and teach doctrine of an apostle or a deacon, amen, or a bishop, that is not the woman's place, amen. Right. But those that are just going and, and pouring honey on Bibles, they're kicking Bibles as footballs, they're catering to carnality, they're putting men on stripper poles on a, on a men's retreat. I mean, there's so many things that my eyes have crossed through these past several weeks that are just outlandish. And how can you say that you believe in Jesus and you see these things and you not be just irritated in the spirit, 
right, frustrated in the Holy Ghost, like this is not of God. Where, where is the wisdom and the discernment? Well, the truth is many don't want to have the wisdom and discernment of the Holy Ghost because it's going to come against your wills and your way. That's why these men preach and teach to carnality. Amen. To so the carnality of man and it draws so many. There's so much out there. Amen. But those are the ground levels that you can obviously tell. Casting out devils, people doing dances, twisting and twirling and all these things. You don't see that in the scripture. There's casting out of devils that you'll see of truth that my eyes have witnessed. And it's, it's not a show. It's not a, a changing a tone of voice to, to cater to a demonic network in Africa. Right. You command and you have power in the Holy Ghost and you believe that devil will go. But to bring people up on a stage and to make a show out of it, these things are truly going on and it's, it's lies and it's deception. Amen. So the church, the modern church, and yes, needs to repent. But those who are new to the faith, amen, don't just be drawn by signs and wonders. Many when Jesus, you have to know your word. You have to know the Bible. If you don't know the Bible, Satan's going to greatly deceive you. You can still know the Bible and Satan can, yes, be able to deceive. Because if your heart's not knowing the scripture of a truth and your belief, you can know the Bible. Hear what I'm saying? You can know the Bible, but if you don't have faith and believe the Bible, if you just know it, you can still be deceived. Right. But so what about those who don't know the scripture? This is where God is saying, I'm raising up a remnant to preach and to teach truth and sound doctrine that you be not deceived, that you be disciple, that you know the way that Satan cannot deceive you when you believe this word. Right. Amen. You can quote scripture all day. If your heart don't believe it and your mind don't believe it, Satan will still deceive you. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. How can you know the scripture? Man shall not lay with man. It's an abomination. But if you don't believe it, amen, and you justify it in a church and you know what's going on, that, that deceiving devil, you can know the scripture. But if you don't believe it, you won't obey it in all areas, right? Matthew 7, 15 declares to us from the Lord, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Amen. So many ravening, ravening wolves that are coming to, what is a wolf? A, a wolf comes to kill sheep, right? right? So... The, the word of God says that they come in sheep's clothing. They come preaching Jesus, teaching Bible, having church, preaching sermons with ministries. They come with this outward adornment of a Christian, of a pastor, of a leader, of a shepherd, right? Of a sheep. I'm, I'm a follower of Jesus. But what the spirit inside that vessel is a wolf. Meaning it ultimately wants to kill you. It ultimately wants to destroy you and pluck you out of the true flock of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. It wants to not see you saved for real. Mm -hmm. It wants to kill you. But look at this. But yet it has a sheep's clothing. So it's going to act like it's your friend. It's going to act like it's your buddy. You have to be in wisdom and discernment and the Holy Ghost to discern the spirit of a wolf. How are you going to know that? you got to know the great bishop and shepherd of your soul, Jesus. Because he says, my sheep follow, hear my voice and they follow me. But the sheep's dressing and the, and the wolf spirit will come and say scripture and preach Jesus. But you got to know who's Jesus and who's the wolf. Mm -hmm. This is the devil out masquerading as an angel of light. Mm -hmm. Right? And he'll say Preaching and teaching, but it will cater ultimately to your carnality. It'll cater to your lust. It'll cater to this world. It'll cater to a wide gathering of, of, of people wanting to be saved, but really they don't want to hear everything of what God has to say. Right? right? This is wolves and sheep's clothing, and these, this wolf spirit, it will, it'll literally do the, the, the work of an, exter an external sheep. But the inward part, it really wants to deceive and to kill you. And it, it comes in a way, in a fashion that will be in time, right? It won't just be, oh, that was a wolf, right? It, unless your discernment's there and you, you're in the Holy Ghost and you know sound doctrine and God highlighted it to you otherwise, right? You can sit underneath a wolf or be around a wolf and it, and it be on the low for a while. 
and it'd be month after month, but secretly it was studying you. Secretly it was seeing where you're weak at. Secretly it was seeing, do you know the word of God? Secretly it was seeing, do you have faith in that teaching? Do secretly it was seeing, mm, they're weak right there. They don't believe everything, right? They're not truly following. They're, their mind's not fully set on the way of God and his word ultimately. I can deceive right here and it tries to pull away. So a month, two, three, four, six months, it will study. This is the spirit of a wolf. To seek that and it'll come and to pull you out of the flock and to kill you and to destroy. Amen. It has no regard for the life of the soul of a sheep that wants to be saved. And so this is the point and purpose of a shepherd to watch and to guard for these spirits. To watch and to guard for Satan's kingdom and to keep the, the sheep protected. How is that? Prayer, yes. Teaching, yes. Teaching of God's way and holiness with understanding that the sheep know how to walk and to talk and to stay, stay sanctified, right? To know God's voice, not just to believe every voice that comes to them, right? In their own walk or by another preacher or teacher or by another person that has sheep's clothing, right? You got to know God's voice. This is the purpose of a shepherd. Not just to hear the pastor's voice, but to know God's voice. Many that are in the, the these these denominations or these this 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 realm of, of of Christianity that God is coming against, the don't judge is so used. You know, don't judge me, don't judge me. It's Matthew chapter seven, verse one through five is where they really base it off of. You know, don't judge me. But if you read the context of the passage of the scriptures, even continuing past five. God's saying you judge righteous judgment in another place of the scripture, right? But he's saying in that context, don't be a hypocrite. Right. When you judge, judge righteously, but don't have a beam in your eye and try to cast out your brother, right? D -d 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 don't be over here in adultery, but you're over here saying, brother, you got to get that cigarette out your mouth, right? Right, right brother, you're in great adultery in your heart and you're married to a wife, yet you're over here condemning the brother with a cigarette. You want to go ahead and clean up your own first act, right? Make sure you ain't smoking a cigarette your own self, right? That you're not right. puffing up some other vapors from a vape pen your own self and all these other things. You got to make sure that when you have that judgment, it's a just balance because that judgment's going to come back unto you. We're supposed to have judgment in the house of God. God says judgment first begin at the house of God. And if it first begin with us, how much more so are those of the world, right? But this is where we got to learn the, the don't judge me doctrine. God says to judge righteous judgment. And that's not even the topic for today, right? But this is a part of the wolf in sheep's clothing. Don't judge. God says don't judge. Well, you got to know more than just the first Matthew chapter seven, verse one, because you got to keep reading. And then once you kept reading, you got to keep knowing the, yes, the gospels and the epistles of Paul. And then you got to go into the books. You got to go into, you got to know this word where God says everything of an imbalance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sir, or last week's message was what is the apostles doctrine? Amen. And, and as the ministry outlined that and the Lord had me go over it, we got to know what is the apostles doctrine. It's the prophets, the apostles and Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone of this whole Bible of an understanding that God reveals how to live, how to be, how to judge, how to love, how to correct, correct, how to humble yourself, right? How to not exalt yourself, all these things, how to be holy in this present world, everything. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But these bishops these days are self-willed. It's all about really truly increase of money and fame and following right. amen while having the signs and wonders gotta maintain that mm -hmm. but the signs and wonders come with just believing right the bible also says that that the works come right with with even without repent or the, the 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 signs and wonders they will come with your belief right and and the gifts come without repentance so we cannot again be captivated by 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 people casting out a devil healing the sick, those signs will follow that belief. You just got to believe, right. right? You just got to believe. You don't have to be in holiness. It doesn't say you got to be in holiness and have the standard and all these things. Then they'll come out. You just got to believe. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So these bishops that are self-willed and cater to the carnality of men, you got to know God's will. And you got to understand the carnality of man that God's trying to renew us from in our mind, renew the spirit of our mind, right? 
The fivefold ministry is here to, to watch, protect, to perfect you in the Holy Ghost. But you also got to know your word. And you also have to find a leadership that's going to govern and watch for your soul and tell you the truth and submit under them for they watch for your souls. Right? And, and God is so faithful to do this when you have that mind made up. But Titus chapter 1, verses 7 through 13. Titus 1, 7 through 13 and verse 16. For a bishop must be blameless, right? And before that, even it goes into a deacon, the husband of one wife, right? So this isn't the, the, the spouse of one husband. This is the husband of one wife. We look at the order. This is a man that's supposed to have one wife as a deacon, right? That rules his house well. And all the qualifications and titus of a, of a deacon, which is a minister, or a pastor, which is a bishop, an elder, right? that it's a man's position. The man is the head of the house. Christ is the head of man as God is the head of Christ. And the man is the head of the husband. And this order is divine from all the way back in the garden till now in the home and in ministry. Right. right? And so a bishop must be blameless, though we're getting to the bishop part as a pastor, as these false pastors and bishops have risen up, must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, Right. But these many bishops are self-willed, the self-will to see they want to see the ministry thrive and people come and be saved. But they leave God's will and standard and holiness and true preaching and doctrine because now they want their will to be fulfilled. And it may seem good and godly and it seemed like it'd be right, but they're walking away from the rock. They're walking away to build up their house on a different foundation, which is their own. Right. Not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, nor striker, not given to filthy lucre, a filthy way of getting money and increase. Right. Even this happens with obviously in the church. Right. God says that they'll make merchandise of you. Beware of these things. All these books, all these things. Right. There's there's a healthy balance to the thing. But when it becomes all about the money, 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 this, 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 so, so, so you got to really watch for that. As these false prophets are looking to make a, a merchandise out of you, out of your faith and belief and love in God and manipulating the scriptures. We give God the honor of our first increase always. Lord, we went over that doctrine and teaching from old to new before even the, the law came. It was it was through through the men of God with 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 offering that first offering, even with with. Uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Help me, O father, Lord Jesus, with uh, Cain and Abel. Right. With their offerings unto God, one was accepted, one wasn't. Right. But going on to this, you've got to know truth entirely, entirely of God's doctrine that you not be taken advantage of these these filthy bishops. Right. But a lover of hospitality, a lover of of, of good men, sober, just, holy, right, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught. Amen. A bishop hath been taught. There's no self-risen up bishop. There has to be a submission first with a man, even with a, with, a, with a deacon or a bishop, to be in their leadership, to be taught, raised, and, and, to, and to grow up in the, in, in the ways of God. And then as the Lord would lead to be ordained and laid hands and the pouring out of oil to be brought into the ministry and to be brought into position, to be put on the wall and to govern for souls. Amen. There's... There's a standard, there's a way. And if, and if you're not governing your home, if you're not loving your wife, if you're not meeting of what the scripture says, then you don't even qualify. But many are walking away even from these parts of scripture and being ordained into ministry, right? Holding fast the faithful word, amen, which is able by sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. Thank you, O Father. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, O Lord. Can you, uh, Demi, can you get me my wife's Bible up there on the window, please? That black Bible? Thank you very much. I believe I, I have my notes mixed up here. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Glory to God. But, but focusing on this, thank you very much. Focusing right on this, on this self-willed. There's, there, there could be no self-will within the ministry, right? You have to completely remove self out of the equation that God can fully use you. 
This is in every walk for us, but then especially within the churches that many are going to and hearing preaching and teaching at, right? And you have to really get sober, put away, right, the, the traditions that you've been taught and let the word of God renew you and show you who he is and which the, which the way we ought to go, right? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let, let, me, let me get here real quick. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, O oh Father. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, let me pull up this real quick here. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Titus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have my notes mixed up. Please forgive me on that. Amen. But we're going to continue to move forward. Amen. As, as it was even right here, I forgot the chapter and verse. But as even those who are unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, they come, especially they of the circumcision, right? When the church was coming up and, and the apostles were, or, were governing and, and raising up the church and the Holy Ghost that God had sent out, there was those who were holding fast to the circumcision of the flesh. They were holding fast to the part of the law, right? And he was saying here, as Paul was saying to the church, these are deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, because now we know it's not the outward circumcision of the flesh of the law. It got transferred into the spirit, which is baptism in Jesus name, and which is the inward circumcision of the heart made without hands, which is a work of God. Amen. So we hold the circumcision, but it's not which is of the old, right? But whose mouths must be stopped. They subvert whole houses, teaching things they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. It goes back to filthy lucre. No matter if it be a preaching and teaching of the old law that God truly did get away with or get uh, removed or sorry, fulfilled and transferred into the New Testament in a different way, which is that which is of, of the circumcision, Right. Or be a different way, not even something of the law, just a different teaching. Right. That they they, they twist the scripture to gain. Right. A greedy gain. This has been going on. Ain't nothing new under the sun all the way back then. Right. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said the Christians are always liars, evil beasts and slow bellies. They'll literally make doctrine, which is doctrine of devils. Right. right? And what, what is what is a false prophet? What is a false apostle? What 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 are those is a, is a, is a, is which is a liar, right? And it's those who truly don't want to grow in correction and gain understanding. Those those in ignorance that God will bring to truth. But those who truly don't want God that way, they don't really want to preach and and and, and teach what God truly really says. They want to hold that out and get and, and remain self willed, right? That they they be able to continue to grow. And, 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 and pervert the word. A false prophet will make one scripture contradict another scripture. Well, this scripture will contradict. There's no full understanding of the Holy Ghost. They fully haven't submitted themselves. Amen. They fully haven't submitted themselves and God hasn't given them that understanding. And again, ultimately, it's for their self-will. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. Right? If there's a teaching that comes to us that comes against the apostles' doctrine, the, the full understanding in the council where there's a misunderstanding, and, and that spirit is saying, you have to be circumcised of the eighth day, we'll stick with that as the scripture is saying, right? And unless you're circumcised in the flesh and of the eighth day and you're holding steadfast to this, right? We know that, yeah, that was given through Moses, right? By God through Moses and of the law, but that was changed, right? So we know that there, we don't, we don't have to follow that, right? That we bring the children in the covenant, yes, boy and girl, and it's through water baptism. So we understand now, but those that would try to creep in and to even try to bring that teaching, you got to cut that flesh. If not, you're not saved, right? And what they're trying to do it for a profit, really for the money, right? And so they can deceive the heart of the simple those who don't know the bible those who don't know that now it's baptism in jesus name right but this is where god is raising up he's exposing these false teachers you got to rebuke them sharply the, the the bible says right they profess that they know god but in works they deny him being abominable disobedient and unto every good work reprobate meaning also unapproved rejected after testing after testing the spirit which is in that 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 prophet or that 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 pastor's mouth if it's not with with the understanding of everything entirely of the word 
the word of God says you rebuke them, right? Sharply. And hallelujah, you just, they're unapproved, right? They're, you reject it, right? This is what also comes to, I have the scripture back here. Let me get to it. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Right. Let me get to this here. Romans chapter 16, verse 17 through 18. Now I beseech you, I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine, the teaching which you have learned and avoid them. See, it's the same thing over and over again. You know, don't, and then the whole don't judge me and this. No, no, we're supposed to judge. We're supposed to test. Right. If there's a misunderstanding in that man of God's mouth and, and God bring the understanding, glory to God, there's times of ignorance for all of us. But that that teaching, that preaching, it keeps being the same. It's heresy. It's re, the, the word of God's rejecting it. The word of God's rebuking it. And they still keep on that way. And you just know something isn't right because the scripture keeps bringing the truth and the clarity. So you're understanding, and you know, just something ain't right still within the ministry and what's going on. And God's saying, you got to come up higher. This is my testimony, my family's house. Amen. That there's something that's not right. Lord, there's something that that you're showing me in your word. And God truly said, you're not reading your word enough. You, you're you're, you're spot reading, you're picking your reading in here and there. You need to read my word that you know, right? And then, but also God sent pastors and men to preach and to teach to me the understanding and anointing they had that God gave them and opened up mine. And so it just blossomed. So this is where God says that you got to know. And when you get into the truth, when you get into holiness and you see still those who are causing offenses and contraries, and they're trying to divide the truth up and saying, you don't got to do all that. He says, what, what you have learned, avoid them for they that are such serve not our lord jesus christ but what their own belly right they're self-willed it's a self-will right i could i i could god forbid make a self-will in this ministry in here in arizona and say well i just want to see people saved so bad i'm gonna again i say it all the time i'm gonna leave the standard i don't women you don't got to do all that man it's fine you can put on your dress women put on pants you can do the head cover everything that that holiness comes into a, a touchy subject for a lot of believers or, oh i don't got to do all that so like we could leave those things alone and just open up the doors and we could just have a huge flourishing and outpouring all is well god is love and we just leave that standard because that'd be my will i just want to see people safe so bad that i don't we don't need all that but god forbid right you you all would have to be to the point well brother Joshua, you, you've, 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 you've left the word of God, right? You, in your own way, in your own faith and heart towards God, loving him first, right? Would have to say, brother, you've left the standard of God. I understand you want to see people saved so bad, but you cannot water down the word and neglect the scripture and make it to where it just fits your will to see people saved so bad. This is where it's deceiving, it's deception. People, they want to see people saved so bad, they don't want to tell them all the Bible says because they know it goes against the carnality of men. So what do they do? They change holiness into carnality. They put up all these things that just cater, cater, cater. Come, come, come. Eat, eat, eat. We'll bless you. We'll give you food. We'll put up the Christian rap. We'll put on headbanger music for the white boys. And what else we got? We got some, you know, some, uh, I mean, it keeps going. I can't even think of all these things. God, I thank God for the renewing of the mind. What is it? Uh, electro music, all this. Like, I mean, there's gospel music in every genre, right? But if when it comes to like a, 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 a beat that's really not in the Holy Ghost, right? When it's something of a, of a demonic realm that just came into the church and then you put Jesus lyrics on it, we really watch for that, right? And you really see that, you know what? This really isn't Holy Ghost inspired. There's a testimony that these men or, or people may have. And they just, they don't, they don't know God's holiness yet. But why don't you bring that testimony, what God did for you and bring it to a pure, pure place of worship, right? Not offering up a strange fire, doing your own self will, right? So you want to what? Mark and avoid them, the Bible says. If I was to fall into that category, God forbid, you'd have to mark and avoid me, right? For, because it would be my own belly, my own desire. And what do they say? Is the Bible says by good words, and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple, right? There's many good words. There's so many men out there that are so much more well-equipped than what knowledge I have in my mouth, right? Of, of, of good words, of being able to, 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 to properly give proper speech, 
right? That have degrees in college and, 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 and psychology and all these things that can go out. And this is the testimony of many of these false prophets that are being exposed on a high level out there that they've gone and they got this understanding in psychology and how to cater to people and what works for emotions. And then they come with the gospel and they, they twist it all together to bring forth this this damnable heresy, but their churches are thriving in number. Their churches are thriving in followings and gathering and all these things. But yet, what's going on? There's self-will involved, right? You have to, you have to watch and govern by the scripture. Test them right by the word, not just by signs and wonders. So Revelation chapter 2, verse 2 says. Right. The Lord coming to the churches and dealing with them here in these chapter in this chapter. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and thou how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not. Right. And hast found them liars. But how do you know if Apostle Catherine is not an apostle? A female apostle. Well, because you're going to go ahead and know the scripture, right? When, it, when he comes into Timothy, right? And he comes and says, through the apostle, he comes and says that, right? We even went in Titus. Let me go back to Titus because I skipped that part of a deacon, which clearly outlines what I was saying, outlines what I was saying, right? That the scripture goes and declares unto us. Mm-hmm. Thank you, O Lord Jesus. Oh, wow. The, the, yeah, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, oh Lord. I got my chapters mixed up. Thank you, Jesus. But let me go back over here to Timothy. Let me get back into Timothy here. Thank you, Father. Yes. Thank you, O Lord. Right. So let me let me stay on topic here of this. So first Timothy chapter two. Amen. And I'm gonna actually start with verse nine and work down. As I just said, Catherine, Apostle Catherine, right? A, a, a woman, a woman ordained into that point of leadership, right? So he says in First Timothy chapter two, starting at verse nine, in like manner, he, he began with the man. A man should pray, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. In like manner, also that woman adorned themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness, right? This is why you see the saints and the women here in OCOJ with shamefacedness. Oh, 1 Timothy, sorry. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8 going down, probably 13. 1 Timothy. Thank you, Mama. That in like manner also, this is the, the, the woman adorning themselves in modest apparel. This is an in-depth teaching, amen, of why the garments are changed to a long flowing katastole, as even the word apparel here in Greek from this subject or this, this, this verse in the Greek, it shows katasto in the Greek from apparel, which is a long flowing garment, but why? To hide their, their nakedness, right? Shamefacedness, that's what that is. And sobriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, right? Not with the things of the world that was vanity, but which becometh woman professing godliness, right? There's power with women. The scriptures declare, yes, the spirit of prophecy will still flow through a woman, hallelujah, right? And that God will give wisdom to women, right? As even Pilate's wife have nothing to do with this man. I have been having dreams. I've been bothered all night. I have nothing to do with him. So though God, God will give wisdom and speak through a woman in prophecy. Yes, but there is an, a, a, an order, right? Even with, with Deborah, she rose up, she says, as a mother to Israel, a mother to the church, she was not a leader in the war with Barak. Barak had the sword. Barak went to war, but she, she was a help. God used her as a help and divine inspiration and, and, and showing and, 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 and everything out right, of even prophesying. Hallelujah. But, but becoming woman professing godliness with good works, coming to this place in subjection to God and his word and to your own husband and to, and, and to way that God has it in the order of the church and to even the, the apparel and all these things. There's power in that. 
Amen. There's power because it's that light of Jesus Christ, of, of his doctrine, of his word that shines in this perverse generation and crookedness. Right. Verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. The woman are to learn in silence with all subjection. It does not say the woman's supposed to get up and stand and preach and teach the word and put the, the, the teaching together for today's service. Right. Verse 12 says, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence, meaning learning. Right. As even Apostle said, Apostle Kim, it's not mummy tape over your mouth. This isn't like restricting the anointing out of a woman. But the anointing that God will put upon a woman doesn't override the word and doctrine of God. As I was even hearing of a, of a major ministry that has a big following that was, I think it was Apostle Catherine is her name. Honestly, that's where I think the name's coming from. And he was going to one of her events and was increasing her and her faith to go in disorder. Right? That you should not be, or maybe it was a different woman, but don't have the spirit of fear. God's placed an anointing on your life. You are called to be an apostle. You need to keep on preaching and teaching was increasing her in the faith that she had, which was an error. Right? God will never have come with Deborah and the teaching, well, let's go this way and then twist scripture. And then, then, then Timothy say, well, you're supposed to learn and be in subject. Don't teach and preach. Right? So there's an understanding, but this is where you cannot be self-willed. You have to humble yourself and really seek God because God also says in his word that it's, an, it's a glory of God to conceal a thing and it's an honor for kings to search it out. God just doesn't give you everything. God wants you to learn of him and to study of him and to seek him for real, right? Because it kind of is even like a, I want to say a filter, right? Why does God not just do this huge unflowing of, of understanding and wisdom and revelation and, and doctrine, right? Because your heart has to be sincere. You have to be put through the fire. You have to be purged. You have to be right, even tested, tried and true that God's fire is going to come and do this to see if even our works to test it. If it's stubble, hay or clay, or if it's going to be of diamond, of good, you know what it's going to be, of pearls, like what is it, is it made of a good stone? So we have to come through with our heart purified, tested, tried, true. Do you really want to live for me? Do you really want to? And not just say it. Everyone can say it. It's easy to say it. But when it comes and it comes against your way now, God says, this is my will. Your will was actually opposite. Are you still going to love me? Are you still going to submit to me? Do you still want to learn of me? Right. And when you fall into this place, right, not going increasing a woman in the spirit of error to be an apostle, to learn, I suffer not a woman to teach. That means I don't put up with. Right. I don't suffer that it's not going to happen. The spirit of Jezebel, even in the scriptures back in the times that 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 spirit wants to come and suffocate the anointing out of a man and his leadership to overthrow him in the household, to overthrow him in the ministry, right? It wants to kill the man of God ultimately because that's what happened with Jezebel. She wants to kill the man of God. Put depression, anxiety, and just go bury yourself in a cave, right? Go, go ahead and hide, Elijah. But God says, what are you doing, right? With, even with Adam, what are you doing, right? What, what are you doing? I gave you an instruction. I gave you a commandment. I gave you order. Go and walk in that way right? Yes, there's a great warfare. Yeah, they want to, these spirits want to seek for your life and suffocate, but I am with you. It's not you, it's me, right? So this is why God says, and through the apostle here, I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority. In the church, yes, in the home. That's the beginning of the home, right? This is the, the first ministry. This is the beginning of that. Yes, thank you, Lord Jesus, right? For Adam, verse 14, for Adam was first formed, then E. Right. And this is actually it's it's first Timothy chapter three, not in Titus of the deacon. Right. So it goes on to say a bishop must be blameless. Right. The husband of one wife ruled his health. Hold on, let me let me stop and read that because we're on the subject. So so a woman can't be a pastor. A woman is not called to be an apostle or a, a pastor. Well, let's go into the, the uh, first Timothy chapter three. For this is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop which is an elder bishop elder interchangeable the scriptures declare it. he desireth a good work so we have a man and then it says he in the first scripture of uh, first timothy chapter three right. no woman or female is even spoken or mentioned of to be even thought of to be in this position and it's nothing to undermine a woman. The woman has such a powerful role. A woman has such a powerful role in the church, and especially in the home, 
right? Or even if single, glory to God. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband, well, I'm sorry, the husband of one wife, right? So again, you address the headship here as the divine order in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 of what I was, I was paraphrasing of God, then Christ, then the man, then the woman. This divine order is still outlaid here in the apostles' teaching. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, right? apt to teach, not given to wine, continues to go on, right? Not a novice, less being lifted up in pride as the devil would try to seek to do, right? Not being double-tongued, all these things. But let, let, me, let me fall, or let, let me get into the place here. It goes down to the place where verse 11, 1 Timothy 3.11, even so their wives must be grave, not slanderer, sober, faithful in all things, Right? The, the divine order came to the man first, gave out a whole outline of about six to seven verses of a qualification of an elder, of a bishop. Then it addresses their wives to be grave, not slander, sober in your walk. Yes, not getting high, but sober in your mind, sober in your tongue, sober in your thoughts, sober in your actions, sober in your thinking, sober in your judgment, sober in every area that exceeds just getting drunk and high. This is way more than just not getting high no more. This goes way less of self, right? This is a dying and a renewing completely again. But there's no outlining for the wife of this place, right? Of, of, a, of a leader. It's just saying being a submission, right? Being grave, being faithful in all things. Then it goes to the deacons, right? I, had that, I thought it was deacons first, but it was bishops first. Then at verse 12 says, let the deacons be the husbands of one wife. Right. So verse 12, again, going to a minister, a deacon is the husband of one wife. It doesn't say wife of one husband. It's the order of God. Right. Amen. This is a whole teaching of itself of just women pastors. Amen. As we may get back into as, as the Lord sees fit. Amen. But as I said that, right, this is what's going on in the church there. If you if you see a ministry that's governed completely by a woman, and her husband's just off on the side, still a part of the ministry, but he's just kind of kicking back, like doing the footwork, the armor bearer. No, no. The man is supposed to carry the sword, which is the word of God and give the teaching and the preaching, right? Women have a spot and a place to teach to an extent the younger woman in the church, not teach and elaborate and exhort in doctrine and breaking down in that study, but to give a simplicity, right? A simplicity of the overlining of it. Well, sis, this is why we do, you know, First Timothy says, you know, we're to have shame face in this, right? It's not to break down and to teach and to preach into the congregation, right? Women are to, build, to be there to build up one another and their faith into that place. So there's the proper place of all of this. But if you see that type of ministry going on, or you may have even listened to it or, or uh, be, be connected with one of those, just see where God's teaching and preaching of, through the apostle here, it comes against that spirit. The will may seem good and godly, but ultimately it's error. And we don't want to operate in error because we know that that's not of God. There is no woman that baptized any man or any child. or There's no woman that circumcised the flesh of a baby back in the Old Testament. There was no woman priest back in the Old Testament in Leviticus or no, 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 none of that. It was always men. Did God go to any boat, right? Did God go to any boat, the Lord Jesus, and say, you know, hey, hey uh, I'm going to stick with Catherine. Hey, Catherine, follow me. <laughs> he didn't do it to the extent of choosing his disciples to the disciples he was going to raise up his apostles, right? He called men, Matthew, Peter, Mark, hey, men, follow me, right? Women came and helped with the ministry, and they sold into the ministry with their abundance, right? Whether it be money and food and helping and washing and clothing, handmaidens, you know, that type of labor, and that's needed in the church. This is where, this is where it's such a great blessing, right? Because that's where the, the, the lowest position is really the highest esteemed, right? That in, in, God's, in God's body. Glory to God. This is how, this is the mind of God that we're revealing today, right? Come up out of it in this false church these days, right? First John 4, 6 declares, we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. If you say you know the Lord and that you're a follower of the Lord Jesus, but when you hear even the, the sound doctrine coming forth from the Bible and you say, mm, that's not right, well, then do you really know God? He esteems his word higher than his name. It's not enough just to have a Jesus Christ t-shirt to quote songs and to praise him and sing hymns. 
You got to know him for his word. He's never going to vary from the scripture. And I thank God for that. Right. I thank God for that. If he, he, he could. He could just twist it up and make a doctrine every day. He could switch up and switch up to a new covenant every day. He could do whatever. He could say, go jump off a building and now you're making it to the kingdom. Right? You could just not flip a light switch and keep the law to the point of the Sabbath day. You don't do any work. Right? It could be any way he chose to make it. But now as he's left it in a blueprint that's not going to change, it's only going to, this world's going to change when he comes back. But everything until that day, that great day at the last trump, it will remain the same. The church has left that though, right? So, but if you're of God, you, you, you heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Doctrine, teaching. Hereby we know the spirit of what? Truth and the spirit of error. But she has such a great anointing. She casts out devils. She folded up lawn uh, chairs at the park, you know, and... And the minute she's thriving, she has 350 women in her women's group and this and that. But yeah, it, well, who is she? She's self-proclaimed apostle, right? No, that's, that's, not, that's not right, though. That's not right. Take your zeal and your love for Jesus and bring it into a alignment with the spirit of what? Truth. That's of the Lord. Do we think the spirit of error is of God? No. Who is that? Confusion. Who is that? Satan. Who is that? The great deceiver. Who is the great deceiver, right? That, that comes. He's the wolf. He, 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 he's the lion. He's like a lion roaring around, roaming around, sinking whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. And this isn't the church he's trying to devour, and it's through the spirit of error. First John now, chapter 2, verses 3 through 6. And hereby do we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. I love this scripture and even it, it just it hits hard. There's a there's a, a, a sermon that is uh, destroying ungodly appetites from main campus with Pastor Kip from years ago. And as he was even saying, it's true that many say that they know him. So many people say, I know God, I have a relationship with God. He loves me. I love him. And and it's so real. Just yes, exactly right. This is truth. What he's saying, and this scripture says it. And hereby, though that we know that we know him, what well, how? If we keep his commandments, he that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments, what does the word of God say? Is a liar. But no, I know him. I love him. Let's get to the very healthy place in that area of ignorance, right? There's a place of ignorance for God wants winked at, right? But John 4.23 and 4.24 says, But the hour cometh and now is where the true worshipers. So there's worshipers, then there's what? True worshipers. How? But what is that? Doctrine, right? Worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must. It's a, it's a must worship him in spirit, yes, and in truth. So you can't just be so zealed out in the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues. Glory to God. But you gotta, and, and baptize in his name. Glory to God. You're born again. But you got to worship him in truth, too. You could be baptized, God filled with the Holy Ghost, and you start to deviate and go into your own self-will and offer up a strange sacrifice. Right? Even, even, even pastors in the old time of the book of Malachi, they would know God wouldn't offer this sacrifice and they would still offer it up for the people. Right? So even someone being born again and being in a place in, in the leadership that God even put them in, you can start to vary. But God says you got to know this spirit of error so you don't vary. Right? And he that say that, that you love him and you keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. And this is where this modern day church is at. And this is why we see Bibles being kicked on a stage. This is why we see people acting like they're casting out devils and they're not. And it's like, what is going on behind this stuff? Right? That, 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 that writing in tongues on a, script, on, a, on a whiteboard and someone comes and puts their hands on it, then they fall out. Right? Pastors getting off the pulpit. There's not that in scripture. Right? We, we don't, we don't, that's, that's kind of strange, honestly, but this is what's going on. I've been seeing them. Then even pastors will have this great anointing and they just touch people and they fall out and they spin out and they jump around and they, do, where, what, what is this? That doesn't go, it's not Bible. It hasn't happened in the scripture, 
right? There's, there's, a, there's a falling of the Holy Ghost upon someone, right? There's, there's, there's a shaking in the Holy Ghost, yes, but there's this, there's this spirit of error that's, that's masquerading as an angel of light. There's these different things going on, and we don't want to seek so much on that to where we could get in a place where you accidentally start to blaspheme the Holy Ghost. You just got to know the spirit of truth and say, mm, that don't seem right, right? Mm, that, don't, that, don't, that ain't right with the scripture, and pull away from it. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected, right? How do you know that you're in God? When you keep his word. And this is what the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. So how do we know that we're saved? How do we know that we're in Jesus? How do we know that we're the bride that he's coming back for? Not the bride he's going to say, uh-uh, you got spots, wrinkles, and blemishes. You ain't coming in. You've been a friend of the world the whole time. You're actually an adulterer in my eyes and your heart was not set on me. You didn't want nothing to truly do with me. Only on the times you did for your own will. You wanted deliverance. You wanted blessing. You wanted increase. You wanted out when it was time to be out of a circumstance. But in that circumstance, I was trying to shake you. I was trying to humble you, but you didn't put on sackcloth and ashes. You didn't humble yourself. You actually just chose to exalt yourself hallelujah but god said hallelujah but you know that you're in him when you keep his word verse 6 he that saith he abideth in him if you say that you're in jesus ought himself also so to walk even as he walked how did jesus walk he walked without sin he walked without hypocrisy he walked in the holy ghost he was god manifested in the flesh but that same spirit of the holy ghost saying that abides with us and if you don't have the holy ghost god says that spirit of truth will be with you and shall be in you the spirit of truth is already with you you're already baptized in his name god is with you his grace is with you you still walk upright before the lord you make a fall you still stumble you make a sin you repent swiftly right repent and be zealous of good works pick it back up god's not going to come and condemn you just truly repent of it and don't keep saying it doing it doing it doing it you ain't doing nothing about it repent from that thing and god will bring you to the place that you what walk even as he walked you're a babe you're being born again babies don't know how to even walk yet they got to first learn how to feed and they learn off the sincere milk of the word of god then they got to grow from that and then they got to pick up a you know this 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 form and this parable of even natural birth and a baby growing it's a process but this is the modern church they stay at this baby a lot of them aren't even born again so they're not even a born again baby they're still outside the covenant of god not baptized in his name nor even filled with the holy ghost but even if you have the holy ghost you got to be baptized in the name of jesus you still ain't gonna make it in thank you jesus that goes against bible as uncomfortable as that may seem wait really Yes, Bible says you have to, he that believeth and is baptized, Mark 16, 16, shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. So to say that you're not baptized and you're still going in and you're speaking in tongues, I've got to come back and say the scripture does not say that. The Bible says that you've got to be born again, water and of the spirit. Those words came out of Jesus' mouth, God in the flesh, right? He, the apostles kept preaching and teaching. Well, Paul didn't baptize. Yeah, Paul said that he didn't send me to baptize, but to preach and teach. But yet still, Paul, Paul did baptize some souls. Hallelujah. But not only that, the ministry was still fulfilled with baptism. Glory to God. Peter still was baptizing, preaching repentance and baptism. In Jesus' name, you cannot neglect and take one scripture to contradict another one. Now you are a false prophet now you are a false teacher now you are led by the spirit of error and your own self-will instead of getting into the word of god and saying i was wrong i was preaching the wrong thing i was teaching the wrong thing lord i repent lord help me lord jesus uh, show me lord jesus. right this is the place where those don't want to follow because their will is self because to say that you were wrong and that you led people astray and to not repent of that you're still walking in your own will your self-will because you don't want to let you don't want to let your ego down, yeah. You probably pride, right? And truly, you just don't want to you don't you don't want to take correction for that thing. But how dare you continue to preach that heresy when you know the scriptures condemning it, right? But this is where the warning is out to the souls that even here online, you hear anything through the ministry of OCOJ, and it comes a different voice, a different ministry, a different pastor, a different teaching. You got to love God and truth more than any, any man, any ministry, anything that you've gone through, right? Praise God for God using, right? People, places, and things to get us on our walk, correct us, and to grow us, right? And, you know, but he leads you to the green pastures, right? What is that? Eternal life, Amen. right? He leads you beside still waters. What's that? The Holy Ghost where there's peace, there's calm. He's the Prince of Peace. 
There's all this confusion, contention, and strife, and envy, and backbiting, and murmuring, and gossiping. What is that? That's of the world and carnality, church. But God says, I'm going to lead you in the Holy Ghost to men and brethren that will govern your soul and, and be there for you. Hallelujah. But your soul is going to be at peace. Knowing what? Now that I'm, I'm going to be resting in Jesus when I take my breath, of my last breath, I want to know that I'm saved. Hereby we know that we know him when we keep his word. He that said you're a Christian, basically, let me put this in more simpler terms. For First John 2, 3, 6. I'm sorry, 2, 6. If you say that you're a Christian, you are so to walk even as Christ walk is what the Bible says. Right. You don't walk as Christ walk, you better check your walk. They're going to come against you and say all types of things they did it to him. Right? <laughs> when you hear preaching, teaching other words than that of the apostles teaching, reject it. Right? Uh, mark and avoid them. Mm -hmm. They're trying to deceive you with uh, good words and fair speeches. Don't be a simple person, meaning a lack of understanding person, right? Lack of knowledge. God says my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Right? We'll get to that. We're going to build up from this, right? Thank you, Jesus. But let's look at something else here of offering up strange fires to gain numbers. Strange fire is a sacrifice and a, and a way of worshiping God that God does not permit nor allow. Yes, it was extremely harsh in the Old Testament. People would die immediately, right? Just like right here with Nadab and Abihu, Leviticus chapter 10, verses 1 through 3. And Nadab and Abihu, thank you, Lord Jesus, the sons of Aaron, right? The priests, they took their, they took either of them his censer, they had their censer, right, to offer up, offer up the, the, the sacrifice, right, and the incense, and put fire therein, and put incense thereon, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, this is it that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me. Do we even see here, though, that the scripture is saying in us, mm -hmm. right? He's saying, I'll be sanctified in them. Our will is inside of us, but God has to be greater than our hearts and our will. We have to be sanctified on the inside first. God forbid we preach you come out a pants woman and put on a dress and you ain't right in your heart. You got to get sanctified in the inside of the cup first, then the outside. Mm -hmm. God, truth, because what's going on the inside comes on the outside. Right. Mm -hmm. You can hide it all you want, say you love God all you want, but you ain't sanctified on the inside, right? You're not really receiving this washing thoroughly of, a, of his bride. It's going to come on your outside, the adornment, the way you talk, act, all that, your order in the home, all that's going to be shown. Right. But this is God saying, I will be sanctified in them. That's us now in us. Right. He wants our hearts that come nigh me and before all the people, I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. You see that that that, that Aaron lost his own son from the God that he served and was worshiping. Right. God doesn't release that fire like that today. But this is the same God. This is the Lord Jesus. Right. But so we look at this in Leviticus chapter 10. What did they do? They took, of an in, they took of a fire that God said not to have, right? They were supposed to take that fire from the altar that was sanctified, that God instructed in the incense that was supposed to be put together just as the way God ascribed, uh, uh, prescribed to. But people will say, no, that's legalistic. It don't take this and that and this and this. Just take this and take. It don't matter where you get the coals from. Let's just let's just make it happen because it'll still offer up something. It's still something tangible, right? It's still a, a, a sacrifice. It's still smoke that's coming. But it doesn't really matter these things. But these things, this is all scripture is profitable for doctrine and for reproof. So we can and we do go back to the Old Testament and we go back into Leviticus and we get the heart and the mind of God because we got to understand the fear of God. If you don't have the fear of God, you will not grow in wisdom. You will not grow in understanding. You will not grow, nor will you be saved in Jesus Christ. It has to come by the fear of God that he gives us unto you. So you see this, Lord, you really did devour, right? That, that, that they were offering that up to you, but it was not in holiness. Now it's for us, it's in holiness. 
sanctified. Sanctification is holiness. What is sanctified? Set apart. What is holiness? Set apart. Holiness set apart from the world. Not of the world, but far from it. Holiness. This is the fire that God accepts. Strange fire nowadays is worldliness and Christianity. That's the strange fire. It's not sanctified in them. This is the strange fire going up. What does that mean? Well, you can praise, you can shout, you can dance, all these things. Even let's get to the threshing floor here. Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 3 through 7. Another example of this. Amen. Strange fire, yes, but this is what goes on. 2 Samuel 6, 3 through 7. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart, right? As they got it back from the Philistines that had taken the cart, the, the ark of the glory of God, they put on a cart, but then they got it back, right? And they put it up on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in Gibeah. And Uzzah and Ahihu, the sons of Abinadab, drove the new cart. They pulled it. They kept rolling that thing on those wheels. It's a lot easier to roll that thing on wheels than it was to carry it tremendously easier well that sounds kind of familiar today with this this preaching and teaching it's a lot easier to suit to the carnality of man than to preach holiness sanctification the apostles doctrine right because that becomes more of a of a, of a cross you have to bear and deny yourself will right so so they, they said oh this is the man this is easy let's keep pulling this thing right and they brought it out of the house of abinadab which was at gibeah accompanying the ark and accompanying the ark of god and ohio went before the ark and David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord all manner of instruments made of forward, even of harps and psalteries and timbrels and of cornets and of cymbals. So this is what's going on in the modern church. You're rolling God's glory. You're carrying God and his glory as he said not to do. Right? We learn from this. But not only that, you're worshiping, you're offering up sacrifice. That's good. And God, God says to all, right, all the earth worship the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, all ye right, of, of the earth, all that have the breath. Everything that David continued to go in Psalms and to sing, right? And that worship, though, God will not just be pleased with because you're not handling him the right way. Mm -hmm. You can't worship and praise God your way out of doctrine. You can't worship in your way and praise your way out of basically avoiding the scriptures. You can't do that. God's not going to be, okay, well, you did all that and you worship so much, but you really didn't really pull out of the world. You didn't really want to hear anything the prophets I was sending to you had to say. And woman, you kept preaching. All these, right? So, so that, all that, all of that, for other, for, uh, other types of righteousness that truly is good, God will consider none of that righteousness no more when you stand before him because why? You were working iniquity ultimately in his eyes. So what was going on here? They were worshiping before the Lord and they're, they're driving the ark and they're praising God. They got the ark back. And when they came to Nakan's threshing floor, this is the threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it for the oxen shook it. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God smote him there for his what? Error. God smote him for his error. Hereby we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. You will get smitten by God if you worship him by the spirit of error. We're not in old Leviticus no more, but we sure do learn a lot from the God that we serve. That is from, from the great I am, right? That was, that was, was, and is, and is, and is then to come. Hallelujah. The same one that formed the heaven, the moons, the earth, that formed Adam and Eve, that gave the law to Moses and fulfilled it. And when Jesus, the son came and fulfilled the law and the prophets and said, ain't not one jot, one tittle is going to pass until I fulfill this thing and drink of this cup. But yet, right? So God said, ain't nothing void of that. And even Paul said, we know we love the law because now we know sin. If we didn't have, we wouldn't know. So we gain this of God and say, Lord, you truly say time and time again old to middle to everything of the bible right that you are we're called to be sanctified in you that we're to worship you as you say and this is the apostles doctrine for the modern day church right but god said god smote him there for his error and there he died by the ark of god mm -hmm. so david had to go back and to see in the scriptures how the glory of god the ark was to be handled and it's in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 9. All right. Deuteronomy 31, verse 9. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
This is what we have to do. We have to go back into the scripture, the Bible, and say, Lord, how do you want us to worship you? How are we supposed to live and honor you? Are we to esteem this day or not? Is it rooted in paganism and full of wicked idolatry and luciferianism, all these things? Or is it, is it an honorable thing, right? Honor your father and your mother that thou days may be as long, right? Is it something we can esteem? Because if one day is one man esteem and another man esteem, it's not right, but it's lawful, right? So like we get everything in a balance, well, then glory to God, even on this particular day. But when it comes into something that's rooted and buried and deep and demonic, and now it just looks like a shimmering light. No, we know that things evil and corrupt. We're pulling out of that, right? So we go back to the scripture. Lord, how are we to worship you? And Moses wrote this, so Deuteronomy 31, verse 9, And Moses wrote this law and delivered it unto the priests, the sons of Levi, right? So always the man receiving instruction and doctrine from God and going down to other men to continue that path in that way, right? Which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord and unto all the elders of Israel, right? The ark was to be bared and to be carried, and it was to be instructed to all the elders and all the leaders of Israel. This is how God is supposed to be handled. And the ark is supposed to be carried and bared. You're supposed to put it up on your shoulders. And you're supposed to bear this weight. What is that weight? It's God's glory. <laughs> what is that weight today for us? What is us bearing the ark now and not rolling it on the new cart? It's bearing his glory in the apostles' doctrine and holiness and being sanctified and set apart. Right? It's God's glory and it's crushing at times, right? Imagine carrying the ark for so long, your feet get so tired and the other men ain't carrying it. It's like, man, well, this, this is kind of heavy. You know, after about 10 miles, this is really heavy. And I ain't got no drink of water 15 miles. I'm about to die, it feels like. But God's glory comes and it just, it, it, it comes to crush the us. It comes to get rid of us that he be glorified, right? That we not be standing in the way no more and saying, Lord, I don't want to do all that. Right. Let God's glory and his weight and his be beautifulness come and crush you. Right. That he can bend you and mold you and put you back onto the wheel and form you. Right. Into into the image that he made us, which is to be like him, to walk even as he walked. Right. Would Jesus be down here? I mean, if we really get sober, if I used to listen to Christian rap. Oh, yeah. Especially when I got saved. That's pretty much I think all I listened to before I really got into worship music. Right. I didn't know. The men had powerful testimonies that went right to things I was dealing with at the time, right? I didn't know, but what, who was I hearing preaching? Who was I hearing teaching? Mm, uh, let's see. Who, who, who was it? Uh, Lord help me. I'm not even going to say their names. That's why I'm not coming to me, right? These false prophets, these false teachers... God is all love. God is all love. God is all love. There's some signs and wonders. God is all love. And it sound good. It felt good. And that was cool. But God said, yeah, but you got a heart after me. I'm going to truly reveal who I am unto you. Right? God doesn't always truly reveal who he is and his doctrine to people. Because again, it's an honor for God to, 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 to conceal the matter. Right? The glory of God to conceal. The honor for the kings to search. You got to search God. Otherwise, every church would be Holy Ghost, sanctifies. There would just be one church, as it should be. But not everyone has that heart for God. They don't always want to live for God to that manner. Anyways, would Jesus be down here, right, with, 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 with demonic beats and the, and, and, the, and, the, and the crazy rap music and then, and then be, be rapping on the street corner? No. We can actually testify to this as a few weekends ago, we went to the park down the street. And I thank God, right? If you, I didn't know these things, right? And, and, and that old, on that old way in the old church, the, the worldly church, I would say that teaching is legalistic back then because that's what you're trained to think. Oh, you're legalistic. It don't take all that. I'm going to keep listening to my rap music because God knows, you know, it's getting me through this time. Well, why don't you get into the Holy Ghost music and why don't you get more blessed than that, that rap Christian music for real? You get into some real worship? You get really into the presence of God, bearing the ark and getting into holiness? Not just this, these beats and things. Man, let God renew your mind and get into the presence of God and all that be renewed and that your burden be way lighter. Right? Yeah. Right? So, because we'd be, I'd be listening to certain oh, seven, you know, uh, Brian Trejo, all these, everyone knows the Christian rap and there's other ones that are low, lower than that, that no one, you know, the underground ones, whatever. 
but we'll be listening to it and it'll be a difference and it's like the flesh starts rising back up right that spirit of the world starts rising back up pride will start trying to rise back up like front and look at me like even just wanting to hurt people try to rise us like what is this it's from the beat but yet they're preaching jesus and but then they're talking about dope and guns and drugs and god delivering i'm not trying to talk about rap dope guns and drugs and kicking in your door no more god said i'm born again i'm baptized buried with him and all that are with him are born again and a new creature all things become new the way i think the way i talk the what i set my mind to if i'm thinking about kicking in doors and doing that and i'm getting a thrill off of that god god forbid that thing that's an evil spirit trying to rise up that old man out the grave i gotta crucify him again Right? Forget that, 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 that adrenaline rush of doing those wicked things. Right? For, well, what's going on inside me that I even still want to entertain a spirit like that? Right? This is that self will dying for real. Glory to God. So when I have my testimonies of that's not righteous or the head banging grunge music, but Jesus singing, you can't even hear it the same for real. But it's, that's not the way God says to worship me. God says, lift up holy hands without wrath and without doubting. There's wrath in that Christian music most of the times. There's wrath in that gang, the, the, the head banging music of the grunge metal music of god didn't say worship me that way yeah get your instruments and worship him in holiness david wasn't lifting up no music like that can you imagine that you know that was some beautiful music that we even have some of the things people put together nowadays to watch and it's some beautiful you get in the presence of god it's not just offering up a worship with a strange fire no look what do you want you want something in the spirit meekness building up Lord, hold on. It's not just for me, right? I'm not worshiping music. I want worship. I don't want the worship music to please me. What are we doing? We're made to worship Him to please Him, right? Lord, how do you want? I'm come to minister unto you, right? I'm I'm a minister unto. I, I want to serve you. I want to love you. That's the bride's job to love the husband, to minister to the husband. We're the bride. We're supposed to love on Him, to minister unto Him, right? Lord, what can I do for you, Lord? How can I lift up a praise to you? And He says, "Be a living sacrifice. This is the ultimate best thing." Hallelujah. But then this place of worship. So Jesus wouldn't be down here preaching or rapping no rap music. He says, "What? Go and preach the gospel." Don't, don't, don't game bang, don't head bang, don't do none of that. The gospel, preach the gospel. So when we went to the park and we're seeing a tent and speakers, but I'm like, huh, I felt like there was some type of ministry were going on, but I didn't see nothing in the external to portray that to me. I couldn't tell. I didn't see no holiness. I didn't see no kata stole, no long flowing garments for women. Women were on this, the north, just the modern church, right? They may not know because no one's teaching and preaching them. And they may not really be reading the word for real. That's the whole point for today. Know your word that you don't be deceived and submit to true leadership. And, and so we didn't know. But until my, my brother said that that's ministry work, I, th I think maybe he went up, someone went and talked to him, right? He heard, overheard something. But then a man came and he was giving his testimony through his rap music. And so it's like, no, that's not right. This, the, it, it's, it seemeth right. And they're trying to draw people to Jesus. But it, but it was dead. I'm not even going to lie to you. I, I hate to say it, but it was dead. There was no power in it. Paul says, I'm not going to know you by your fair words and your good speeches and all that, you know, uh, college degree talk or even that. Or even if you don't go to college, I'm, I'm going to know you by your power. I'm going to know the power that's with you, the anointing that's upon you. I'm going to know that it's the Holy Ghost by the way that you're operating, but then also by your words. We don't neglect the words, right? I'm going to know you by your doctrine, but by your power. There was no power there. All it was was rap music going on and whatever lyrics, just, just giving God glory, I believe, to the, to, the, to, the, to the deliverance of that lifestyle. Praise God for that. But there was still worldliness in that worship. There was that strange fire in that worship. God ain't pleased with that. I told my brother, I said, Brother God, why don't we get back to the scripture? Do what David did, right? Why don't we go back here to Deuteronomy? Why, how, we got to seek, uh, you know, why, 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 why'd you make a breach? Why did he die? Because he put his hand, well, what's wrong with this? We're worshiping you. You gave us, the, we got the victory. We got the, the ark back. Like, God, you're with us. Right, but you can't just let, let 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 be caught up in God doing some things for you and give Him glory, but offer up a strange fire and a strange sacrifice and do things that seem withdrawal. You got to continue to examine yourself, continue to to watch your walk, continue to watch your worship, continue to examine your sacrifice. That Satan wants to come and taint that sacrifice, right? He wants to come and stain your garment. So when you when you live this way and you and you get sober and you see though 
As I told my brother, I said, brother, God in his word, he didn't say go rap and do this and do that. He said, go preach the gospel. So what do we do? I thank God for the ministry. When I, when I seen that it was the evangelism that really grabbed my heart to this to the church, I said, what is this? And the Holy Ghost and the power that was, I said, Jesus, speakers in a baptism tank, that don't even matter. The Holy Ghost and the anointing, that's what matters. And the power that came, people be going about their day, don't even know what's going on, don't even probably want God. Then God come and the power of the Holy Ghost come and convict, break down, renew the heart, right? Break off strongholds. People get this is the gospel, this is the power of God. We don't need to bring Christian rap and hip hop and all these things to win numbers. You need the anointing and you need God with you and to handle the ark and the glory of God the way that He instructs, right? I'm not gonna go out there again in some wife beater and tank top and flexing a, a big old chain and, and singing and, and rapping because if you take apart the lyrics and you leave the beat and you look at it if you go mute but you keep the the, the music on the beat you'll see man what is that it's just another worldly thing it's just another rapper it's just another worldly concert you go to even like a seven concert or one of the one of the christian rappers stop the lyrics keep the beat going and look at all the all the rags yeah they might have changed the color of the rag to a black rag a purple rag don't matter what color of the rag they might have done some type of changing but the outward ex now look at the outward adorning still the same god cares about our outward adorning right i'm not going to be i'm not going to be wearing certain things like i used to in the past life let's move on from this Amen. Don't offer up strange fire. God carries, God cares about how we carry his glory. That's the ultimate from this. And how we carry his glory, he wants us to worship him the way he, we, he says to worship him. In holiness, he said, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me. Right? Same God. Don't just put God's glory in his presence and that he gave you a victory and blessing. He brought you out of Egypt and just roll his glory. God says, carry him the way he says to be carried and handle him the way that he has, he he, de he, dem he demands this, but he, he, he's so good. He's so good that he deserves this way to be handled. Right. How dare we handle the glory of God any other way? Right? And when you, you really think about it, like, how do you really want to handle your husband? Just any type of way, it should start to grieve you if you do. Right? And you repent from it and you do it the right way. We don't want to handle God any just any way. Right? So David, right, let's go back. We got to carry this thing. Right? Ezekiel now, let's look at this. Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 7 through 12. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, thank you. Okay, so Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 7 through 12. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear ye the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey. This is what these people are doing. These wolves in sheep's clothing are feeding on the flock of the people financially, by their time, by their emotions, by their things, by all of it, right? They're feeding off of them. They're becoming a prey to these wolves. And my flock became meat to every beast of the field because there was no shepherd, even those that walk away from the sheep. Right? They don't want to really handle the sheep and be there for them. Neither did my shepherds search for my flock. But the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds. Right? A lot of pastors don't think God can't be against them. It don't matter if even God truly did put you in that place. He called Judas and Judas turned on him. Right? Judas turned on him, lost that place. They had to ordain another man to fulfill that man's place. Amen. I am against the shepherds. I will, and look how it was after. It was after money. Judas fell over the money. He, the Bible says that Judas had the bag, right? The bag, what was the bag? The carrying of things, really, the treasury, the money. Judas had the bag. That's even in, in modern rap terms. The bag, the bag, I got the bag, the bag, right? Gucci man, all these, they're always talking about the bag. That goes back to Bible talk. The bag is Bible talk over the money bag. And Judas had that, right? So you see how, how the worldly music is so tied up in demonicness, yeah, but then it even talks about God. And, and it's like, it's, it's, it's the devil overall. God exposes him, right? That's why God says, don't bring that worldliness and all that into my, my holiness and my sanctification. Worship me the way I said to be worshiped, right? So they fed themselves. Now hear you were the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand. Right? It's a very, very 
fine place of where you walk and how what you say as being a shepherd and how you handle the people of God. Because God is watching that person to a height, and it's not a person, it's a man. Hallelujah. God's watching that man. Ain't no woman to be that shepherd. Hallelujah. That man, God is watching and examining how we do everything. So as much as it's to be, the Bible says it's a good thing to desire the office of a bishop, but yet until you get into that place and you thought it was all glorious and it was all spotlight and it was all microphones and it was so, look at me, look at me, ain't nothing about that place so good of a self-will. That self-will has to die because there's a much weight, there's a much blood there's a much self-denial in that place that god is requiring every pastor it's a glorious thing that god be glorified that god be exalted through that vessel but not of the man right thank you jesus so and cause them to cease from feeding the flock neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore for i will deliver my flock from their mouth this is what god did for my family and is doing so many throughout the land from from these wolves, that they may not be meat for them, right? God's not going to allow those who truly want to be saved to be fed off of these false prophets anymore. For thus saith the Lord God, behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out as a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God will come and get you Again, like I say, out of the world, out of your own thing, out of a, a false way, the spirit of error. If you truly have a heart for God, God's going to come. And then there's also the place where God will come and give you pastor, prophet to tell you the truth. But you still, at the end of the day, God will present truth to you. You have to love God and truth more than your own life. Right? Because right? God love you so much that he, he lets you hear the word and, 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 and understanding even and, and, and revelation even. You still have to choose to walk in that way. You have to walk even as he walked. We have to walk even as the Father's will, Jesus, the Lord God, the Creator, tells us to walk. Yeah. Right? But God is seeking his sheep out. And this is what, again, Ezekiel 33, 1 through 9. The sword will, is coming upon the land. The sword cometh every day. But it's going to come entirely to the whole earth, but when a man's life is taken, right? So Ezekiel 33, 1 through 9. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, right? And say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coasts and set him for their watchmen, right? This is God raising up a man to stand on the wall to watch for the people, to cry out against sin, to cry out against unworldliness, uh, uh, ungodliness, the lust of the flesh and carnality and false doctrine, evil spirits, all this that come against sound holiness and, and true teaching of the Bible, right? Of to be a light into this world. We cry out against it. It's God's will and desire for the man to do this thing. But many people, many pastors aren't doing this, right? So what is it that to set him there to be a watchman, right? For the people, right? If when he see the sword come up on the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. Judgment's coming. God's return's coming. Repent. Turn from your sin. Baptize. Seek for the Holy Ghost. Get right with God. Don't offer up a string sacrifice. Live as he says to be holy, right? If God didn't lay the instruction, we're not going to preach and teach it. Glory to God, right? But if that man blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, because you can hear it, and you still won't. I didn't even see the word going here. The Lord knew. You can hear holiness. You can hear the, 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 the sound biblical teaching. But you still have to hearken to it. Listen and abide and do it. Right? Right? So if, if, if the sword come up the land and bloweth, and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. Meaning you heard the word, you didn't receive it, you didn't want to do it, think it didn't take all that. Your blood's upon your own hand. But now let's get back to the shepherd's part, right? The man that's supposed to cry out against it. Verse 5. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. Right? Let that be us. Let that be everyone that would be online. That you hear the sound of the Lord, the Lord saying, Come out from among them, be ye separate, right? 
Verse 6, but if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, many teachers, many, many pastors these days, they don't want to tell you all that. God's all good. Peace, 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 love and prosperity, right? But the sword is coming. They don't want to crowd against it. And if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. So that person's going to die in their sin. Still, yes. But now it's even more. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. The pastor is going to have to give an accountability unto God. That soul is going to die and go to hell because of their iniquity. They didn't, they didn't repent from. Yes, but that, 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 that greater of a position of accountability unto God, the, the blood's upon the watchman's hand. He says, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. This is why I was gonna I was gonna print it out and declare it today, beginning of of today's word, the, the the statement of the church, right? Not the statement of faith, but of OCOJ that we unapologetically preach holiness, right? The apostles' doctrine, the standard of the word of God, right? And and, and it's unapologetically because in the scriptures Jesus didn't apologize, the prophets didn't apologize, the apostles didn't apologize. Ain't no reason to apologize for warning the people about what's going to come on this land and about how to be saved, right? And about how to be holy and about how to worship God the right way and about the spirit of error and the spirit of truth. Ain't no reason to apologize for what God says is right. There ain't no reason, but people want you to apologize. Oh, you offend me. Oh, there's so much that you're doing. They don't make away with that because there ain't no reason to apologize i'm telling you the way that's true and right you need to hearken right, right? but th that's how the devil wants you to feel oh you need to apologize you need to take it down you need to step it down not when it comes to doctrine not when it comes to the truth of the word of god for the watchman right so thou O son of man i have set thee to be a watchman unto the house of israel therefore thou shalt hear the word at thy mouth and warn them from me the warning, the doctrine, the teaching isn't supposed to be of man's will and his self ways and what he thinks right. It's from God. It will always be of the scripture, of, of, of a truth, no contradiction. These wolves have, with sheep's clothing, they have uh, scripture, but when the truth comes, there's contradiction with their teaching. Can't be. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his, wick, of his way to turn from it, right? Crowd against it and, and repent, right. right? Not condemning you. We're telling you what God is saying is sinful and he doesn't want you to do. Why? Because the sword's coming, right? right? This ain't just... Being first, this is what God tells the men of God to do. Preach his word. Amen. But if the uh, but if you warn the wicked man, he he to turn away from it. If he do not turn away from his iniquity uh, from his way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. Right. So those that don't want to tell the full mind of God and reveal it to the people that are shepherds, they have a great accountability of blood upon their hands. Right. But. It's not just to get the blood off of our hands. The, 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 the purpose is to build and to see souls saved and to build you up, yeah. to be saved. Yeah. Right. right? But a lot of people don't even want to declare the truth to deliver their own soul. Right? So this is a, this is a very, very, very cautious way to walk as far as who you submit and listen to for teaching of the Word of God. These self willed bishops again they follow their own spirit let's go to ezekiel chapter 13 1 through 8 and the word of the lord came unto me saying son of man prophesy against the prophets of israel that prophesy right so there's prophets there's pastors in the church of god israel right christians and and god will send a prophet of truth to go to the false prophets see how this is ain't nothing new under the sun same today in a great manner right Go and prophesy to the prophets uh, of Israel that prophesy and say unto them, Thou that prophesy out of their own hearts, hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. 
They'll, 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 they'll begin to say words. Oh, you're going to have a great business. You're going to be blessed and prosper. You're going to be an architectural design. All these. It's like, oh, that sounds good. Oh, I received that in the name of G. Oh, you're going to be you're going to be the next to this and that. It's like, who are you prophesying from, though? You prophesying from your own heart? Are you prophesying from your own will? You prof these 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 ministries prophesy over people and then not be actually prophesying over God. They just think that it's good they think that they're a prophet and so they think that their word is enough to be a prophecy but yet it didn't come from god so it's not the spirit of prophecy actually coming through that vessel that's going to come to pass it won't even happen it's of their own will of their own heart what seems right and it seems right to want to build someone up but don't declare those things if god ain't truly saying that of, of, of the spirit of prophecy right. right thank you lord so they prophesy of their own hearts hear ye the word of the lord Thus saith the Lord God, woe unto the foolish prophets, you follow your own spirit. You have seen nothing, right? They act like they've seen it. Oh, I see you're going to be this and that. But they truly haven't. It's, it's like they, they want to see it. Elijah, sit, sit down and put your foot down and be well behaved or in church, son. Yes, sir. All right. O Israel, thy pro verse 4. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. Ye have not gone up into the gaps neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. This is where these false prophets, they're not going into the gaps, meaning they're not really, okay, some of them do, but not going out, going out, okay, just to seek for that and getting in the harvest. They have a great talk, but they're not out laboring. You know, they go to church and they may seek the, the Lord and stuff, but they're not out there in the labor. They're not making up the gaps. What is the gaps? Breaches in the church. Breaches is really doctrine, teaching, standard, holiness. These, they're, not, they're, not, they're not seeing a way of worldliness in the church and then they go and they tell the congregation and they teach them and preach them in the way of God to restore that gap, right? They're not doing that. It's like a redundant thing I keep saying, but I wanted to see and be in the faith. It's not just my word, not a man's word. If this is scripture time and time and time again and what we see today, right? Neither have they made up a hedge for the house of Israel, the church of God. Don't we know that we're in battle right now? We're in spiritual battle, right? Let's go to Ephesians 6 that, that talks about this. Love Ephesians 6, right? And how the Bible declares this unto us that we are in a battle. It's a spiritual battle, what? For our souls. Ephesians chapter 6. Thank you, O Lord. Right? Verse, starting at verse 12. No, let me, let me see here. Starting at verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Right? To lure, to entice. What is, it? What is the devil trying to do in the church? He's trying to lure you into entice into carnality, to false preaching, to worldliness, to all this, this, this lukewarm generation right, of perverseness. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, put on the whole armor. We're already in this battle now. This is what the, the men on the wall are to do, to warn God's swords coming and judgment, yes, and to prepare us to keep us in this battle that we are physically currently in. Glory to God. Amen. So, they have not gone up and made no hedges. They haven't done this for the for for in the day of the of the battle of the for the day of the Lord. We're in battle. Verse six. They have seen vanity, so they didn't see the vision of God to prophesy to the people. They seen vanity. Oh, you're going to be blessed. You're going to be prosperous. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. If that's of God, I receive it. But if that's just of your own will, it ain't going to come to pass. First of all, and what what is that thing anyways? I don't really care to, for you to tell me that I'm blessed and I'm going to be a, a an entrepreneur one day and all these things. And it really not come to pass, but it's all vanity. What, what does all that mean? Even if I gain that and I don't go to heaven, right? Yeah. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, Thus saith the Lord, and the Lord hath not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would conform the word or confirm the word. So what is that? They, they get others, A, hey, you know, this, this, this is like what's going on in the church these days with, with all this false stuff. It's like a show. It's, like, it's literally like a show on a stage in many of these churches. Go, go up and this is what we're going to do today. This is what we're going to do. Okay. And, the, and it's like, so they have these, 
these people in, in, in the church that will literally already kind of know what's going on and they kind of feed to it, right? So the others that didn't know that are coming just to have a service, they see, oh, oh, okay, oh, they're, oh, okay, so it's not just something that's with him. It's like they, they give that vision and that, that, that mindset to others that, they, that the others that had no idea of it would fall into that snare and fall into that trap, right? Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> that they would confirm the word, right? Have you not seen a vain vision? And have you not spoken a lying divination? Whereas ye say, the Lord saith it, albeit I have not spoken. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore behold, I am against you, saith the Lord God. These, these, uh, Mega churches, yes, all these things that are in great, 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 great error. God is extremely against, right? And just because they're still here, they're still breathing, they're still having church service, they're still getting thousands and trillions in tithes and whatever it is and offerings, they think that they're still all good. But God is 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 really against them. But this isn't just a crowd against the mega false ones. It's against anything, right? Any any spirit that comes against. Uh, full truth and understanding. And then you're going to want to pull away from that which is error and cleave to that which is good and which is of truth. Amen. And so how do we even get to, to knowledge and understanding of God, right? How do we, how do we get to this, right? So I'm going to go to Psalms uh, 147 verse 11. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, that uh, that th in those that hope in his mercy, right? So this worshiping God, offering up strange fire, there's no fear of the Lord. That's why you keep doing it, right? This worldliness and Christianity mix combo, you don't fear the Lord. That's why you're not pulling out of it. Truth be told, if you really, really understood God and you went back in his word and you got the fear of God and you read Old Testament, you start to see how he's holy and how he's had to be handled the way he says, and he ain't playing. He'll make the earth to swallow you up. I mean, he'll do anything he, he, he wants to, right? But yet, yes, we're in mercy and we're in grace. We're in, and the Son of God laid down his life. So, but you've got to have the fear of God. You can't just trodden over the, the, the body of Christ thinking that you're in grace and offer up the strange fire. This is, you, where is your fear of the Lord? It's just not that his, don't you know that it pleased the Father to, to bruise and chastise the Son, right? That's how much he hates sin and, and all these things. So when, you got to have the fear of God to gain the understanding of the Lord. Right? And I'm going to drop down one, uh, still Psalm 147 down to verse 19 and 20. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Right? Those who fear the Lord and are living for him. He hath not dealt so with any nation. As, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So other, other, other nations, right? They haven't really known, or even other, let's say, denominations. They haven't really known the Lord and His judgments, as the Word is saying here for even other nations, but other people. Why? Because they don't fear Him, right? He's going to show His Word unto His people and His statutes unto to Israel. But this is, I'm going to end up here. We're going to close very, very soon. I'm going to go to Proverbs Yep, he, he says here, right, that wisdom crieth out, verse 20, Proverbs 1, 20, she uttereth her voice in the streets, going down. She crieth in the chief uh, place of concourse, in the openings of the gates, and in the city she uttereth her words, saying, how long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? How long will you continue to just love offering up a lukewarm sacrifice and a false error way of worshiping God and think that you're right and you know the scripture keeps coming to contradict it? Right? How long turn ye at my reproof, and I will pour out my spirit unto you, and make known my words unto you, right? Become my people, fear the Lord God. But because ye have refused, I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded, right? This is, you can hear God and his warning, and from the shepherd, and from the man on the wall, and you still won't regard, right? This is, this is many. But ye have set at not all my counsel. They want some of God's word, some of his counsel. They don't want all the wisdom and understanding. They don't want the whole doctrine, the mind of God. They know it's going to come and contradict the life. They don't want that. They want God on their terms. And that's the simplest way of putting it. Whether they say it or they don't, it shows in our life and our actions. Right? 
Because you set out not all my counsel, and with none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh, right? Because you're not in the fear of the Lord. Now it's a fear of losing your own life for real. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they that hated knowledge, they did not choose the fear of the Lord. There's a choice. I could walk away from fearing God and just push him out of my mind and say, you know what? I'm good. Babe, you don't got to do all that. Put the, get, get your, get, get all that, man, where's the stuff that we throw away? All your old hard lit attire. Let's bring that back out. I love that stuff. It caters to my lust and my flesh. Let's bring out the makeup. Let's bring out the long eyelash. Let's bring it all back in. Put it in the church. Hey, everyone's welcome. We're good. God don't have all that standard. It ain't worth it. Or it, 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 He don't take all that, right? Oh, he's definitely worth it. But it don't take, right? you start getting to, you could, you could walk away and not choose the fear of the Lord. You have to stay sober in walking and choosing the fear of the Lord because Satan comes to tempt you, to tempt you out of that place, to pull you in perverseness, to pull you into the place of, 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 of harlot, to being a harlot again, right? Of being like a Jezebel and painting your face. No woman of God painted her face in the Bible, but Jezebel did. This is why we say we're not the daughters of God or not the daughters of Jezebel. They're the daughters of Sarah, right? But you have to choose the fear of the Lord. But they hated knowledge. They didn't want God's knowledge. They want the world's knowledge. They want the knowledge of evil. There's the knowledge of good and evil that we're in. This tree of, that was in the world. You have a choice. What knowledge do you want? You want the knowledge of evil that comes against God's ways and the standard? Or do you want the way of goodness, right? God, holiness, truth, Right? They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. That's another word, despising God. That's a, that's a very, very sobering message. This comes to every, it don't matter who you are. You've been in the faith and, and Holy Ghost filled and apostles doctrine. How We got to be careful that you don't get to a place where you start to despise God in your walk. But this is to the vast majority. Even now, you, the despise holiness, despise, right? Everything that God says to do, glory to God. I therefore, I therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way. They should be filled with their own devices. God's saying, I'm going to give you what you want. You don't want to worship me the way I want to. Go ahead. You don't want my counsel. Go ahead. You hate my knowledge. Go ahead. You'll have your fruits of your doings. You'll be able to eat it of. You'll be able to go buy, partake in what you want. You can come and you'll offer me up a sacrifice. I'm going to get to the, God will get to the point where he don't accept it, right? He'll even make an example out of the congregation, but people don't see it in the Holy Ghost. So then they don't see the reproof coming, right? Even as Apostle Kip was given the example of great bishop that was in the church in the tray of glasses and the Lord's Supper. And he kept coming down and, and he kept falling out. And, and it was, they had to seek God and say, Lord, what's going on? Then the understanding came of the Lord's Supper to the degree of the scripture says so. You got to see when God tries to get your attention. For they turning away from the simple shall slay them and shall uh, prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet <clears throat> from fear of evil. Right? You're not going to have the fear of the devil and of the world and these things. You're going to have no fear of the devil which bring torment. We walk in the fear of the Lord which is walking the right way with him. But what is this though? It brings forth understanding. It brings forth knowledge. If you don't have the fear of God, if you don't choose the fear of God, you're not going to get the full mind of God. He's not going to fully, he's not going to fully, fully reveal like the things, right? The doctrine, you can hear it brought by a preacher, but then God has to open up your understanding, right? So you want that and it, it don't take no deep conviction about a thing to, 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 to obey. Nowhere in the Bible does it say if you get convicted by this teaching, then obey it. If you feel a deep prick in your heart, right, woman, to even put a, a, a covering on your head when you pray, many women don't feel no conviction, but they still do it, right, in the church today, nowadays, right? I may not feel convicted. Now I do completely, now that, now that God's given me great understanding in it, but having a hat on, start to pray like, Lord, no. You know, many men will have a beanie on, they don't, they don't care, they don't, they, don't, they don't see it. But God says... God says it's, an, it's, it's something I'm, I'm against, that there, there's, a, there's a way to this. You've got to seek God for this. I'm going to close here, Proverbs 2. So that, uh, ch uh, chapter 2, verse 2, to probably about verse 6 or 7. 
My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, put them in your heart that you sin not against God, right? So that thou incline thine ear to wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. You got to seek God wholeheartedly that you get his understanding, right? Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, God says, if, you, if any man, he says any man at this point in the scripture, if any man, right, is, is ah, Lord, how I'm paraphrasing it, is, is, is lacking understanding or wisdom, pray unto God and he will give unto you liberally. But you gotta, you gotta seek God for this. It's not just hearing a teaching going about your life. Hearing teaching going about, you gotta seek God. You got to seek God that God is this teaching that I'm hearing of you, right? Go back and read your word and see, okay, it's written, right? If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid, hid tre treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord. You got to really seek after him, right? And find the knowledge of God. So this doesn't just get thrown out. Pearls don't just get thrown out to the world, to the swine. God don't do that. He tells us not to do it as his people, right? He gives them to the people of God, those that seek after him. These great, great, great pearls. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge. So the wisdom and knowledge of doctrine and holiness is from God. And understanding. And all the understanding that, is, that comes from the, the teaching of why. Lord, why do you tell us to do this? Why do you? He gives the understanding, but you've got to seek for it. You've got to choose the fear of the Lord. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Amen. When you choose the fear of the Lord, when you choose to worship Him in spirit and in truth, because it's a choice, but then again, it's also a must, as John uh, 4.23 says, must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So you choose the fear of the Lord, and you see it's a must to worship Him the way that He declares. Amen? When really, it's simple. It's really simple to worship God in holiness. It's really simple, Right? It's, it's the devil that wants you to make that. It's so hard and this and that. He wants you to hold on to your self-will because that's what he did. And he's still doing right. He don't have no repentance. He wants you to hold on to your self-driven will, the, 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 the lame sacrifice. Right? Malachi said, God said in the book of Malachi, if you ain't going to open, if you're not going to even offer up your governor a sacrifice like this, how do you think I'm going to accept this? Right? To offer up the way that seemeth right unto a man of worldly sacrifice. And you can praise God. And you can do everything that you want to do. But you know that there's no standard in that church. You know that there, there's no holiness in that way, right? You say, hold on, what is going on here? God called us to be wholly separate and a peculiar people, zealous of good works. James chapter 2, faith without works is dead being alone. Right? Because this is, this is what's coming to my mind. The Lord keeps bringing, or is bringing to me right now that this is what the, ver the voice of the serpent says. Right? Yeah, but it don't take all those works. We don't need that for salvation. That's what's being said. It don't take all that, y'all. You need to calm down. The Bible says this, but don't you got to go over here and get the understanding because James chapter 2 uh, brings that to a place where there's confusion. And that's of the devil. Well, it's not the Bible that brings the confusion, but it comes to contradict that way of, of teaching and thinking, right? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me find this here. Mm -hmm. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Thank you, Lord Jesus, right? You can't be double-minded in this walk. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Let me get my Bible here. There you go. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay. So James chapter 2, verse... Yeah. James chapter 2, verse 17. And this whole chapter is really good to really get the, the all, like a good understanding of it. But 2.17 says, 
Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Verse 18 says, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. What the Bible says is, our works are as filthy rags before him, that we're not saved by those. Was Old Test was was the law and just our own way of righteousness and even trying to uphold the law, there was falls and all these things. And so God came full of grace and truth, and your own works can't save you alone. That's what the Bible's saying. Jesus, the blood of God, the Son of God, the life of the spotless land that was slain for the whole world, that blood saves. The resurrection power of the power of the Holy Ghost to fill you without both, you're not getting in. That saves. But also your faith without works is dead being alone. You are to have be zealous of good works. James chapter 2 says this. It, it just gives a clear example that if you see your brother in, in need and you don't give him nothing, but you say you love God, how, how are you going to say that you love God, but you don't even love your brother in another place? But then also, what does it profit you just to pray for that brother? Oh, I pray that you be blessed and prosper, but you actually have a, an abundance that you can give unto them and you, and you don't. Right? You don't help them at all. It's just prayer, just prayer is prayer. There's no work with that to help, right? God says, you need to have your works with your faith. But then not only in that, that area of, 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 of helping someone, this also goes into, let's keep going down. We know that there is one God. Verse 19, thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble, Right? The Lord Jesus, but wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works, right? When he had offered up Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? Your faith will be made perfect with your works. So it's not just by a blessing and helping out a brother. We got to the point of actually bringing someone into the covenant right with him offering up his son this works goes on to a great sacrifice right and the scripture was fulfilled which saith, abraham believed god and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of god ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only that's james chapter 2 verse 24 that we ended with and, uh, by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Right? So you got to get the whole understanding of God, His doctrine, His word. Hallelujah. Amen. It's the fear of the Lord that you have to choose when you choose the fear of the Lord and say, Lord, show me. Right? Lord, help me to submit to thine will, even when there's a great fight against it. Right? Coming out of, out of, the, out of the worldly churches. And you come into the straight and narrow path, which many are doing. I, I give God glory for just to even hear the word unto today. Amen. Thank God that you continue to walk in that way. You continue to seek after God with your whole heart. Hunger and thirst after his righteousness and you shall be filled. Amen. And so don't be just any old church. These churches these days, right? They're, they're all over the place. God's coming back for that one without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And we got to walk as he walked. We got to abide in his word, amen, and gain understanding by the fear of God, amen. To God be the glory, amen, for his word that we have to lean on, that we have to judge things off of, how to judge ourselves first and foremost, right? Don't be judging others, you better judge yourself. And most of the time, we got a whole lot of judging of ourselves to do before we look at others. Right. A whole lot of time, it comes down to that, amen, that we be clean, sanctified, and that we can see that small moat in our brother's eye to help cast it out, right? And we don't go doing that thing of a judgment of hypocrisy. So to God be the glory. I pray it was a blessing for everyone. Amen. The strength to us here. Amen. That faith without works is dead. Being alone. Time and time again, the Bible says that. Amen. The false prophets God is exposing on a grand level. COVID obviously did a great job with that, but it's going to, there's things that are going to come again. Amen. To test the faith of the people. Amen. Satan ultimately is coming to test our faith in the word of God as he did with the son of God, God manifest in the flesh. He said, if thou be the son of God, what he does to us is, did he really say that? What he did to Eve is, does he surely, will you, you shall not surely die, right? He added that not into it. 
He repeated everything that God said, except he added not in that, in that scripture. Right? So when Satan comes and adds a twist, adds a word, takes away a word, don't you see how God says you better not add to my word nor take away from it? Because that's what Satan seems to or seeks to do. He seeks to add and to take away. And when you add a word or take away, it can greatly change a teaching. It can greatly mean a twisting of a thing. Right? Oh, it's only for that time back then. Don't you see John Arthur's commentary here and this and that of this Bible? It shows that you don't got to do all of that. That was for the church back in the book of Acts because they had a tradition of the Jews. Well, don't you know that we are of the Jews, but that not which is word outwardly, but which is one inwardly. But don't you know that he came from that and that Jewish lineage of David and all the way back from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the way from Adam when he was first formed from, from God's image, Adam was, not even from the seed of man, that this is God's will and God's way. Hallelujah. We don't just neglect the way and the tradition of the Jews. We want to learn because it comes from the heart and the mind of God. But when God changed it, when the Son of God came, we know the differences in that but we also want to go back and study the marriages right when what would happen in this and that for the great the, from the from the from the bride well everything it all comes together still for the new testament and it comes uh to, to to show us why the doctrine is these ways right submission with husband and wife right all these things of holiness right you don't just want to reject <laughs> you don't want to reject the counsel of god you want to seek and gain the understanding of it amen so i pray the lord Bless you, keep you. Amen. If there's any questions, reach out to us. Amen. As we, 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 we yearn to hear from everyone that would have questions. Amen. And to, to even think of this, that, you know, there's the Zooms that happen throughout the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, sometimes Entrepreneur, Thursday, Global Bible Study, so many Sunday services on Sunday. Uh, but there's, there's a need, right? And if you have a need, don't, don't feel... Uh, hesitant to reach out that you need a, a one-on-one, right? And this really, it comes down to this. You need a one-on-one -on -one Zoom, right? A, a one-on-one -on -one time to about a question, about a doctrine, amen? Reach out and to be even particular, right? And we can we can all coordinate. All the other ministry, the leaders are, are open, amen? And, and as we all have lives and schedules, we can set a time and set it in place, and we can set it in stone, Lord willing, that we could get that accomplished, that we all grow and come into the unity of the faith, the unity of the doctrine, the understanding of how we all are supposed to live. Amen. And this is true discipleship, right? Many are so used to just going to church, hearing the word and sneaking out the back in a sense, and no one really knows that you came in. You were just a click on a number scroller and you paid a tithe and an offering and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that was pretty much it, right? But here in the church is true discipleship. It's more than baptism. It's more than feeling and speaking in tongues in the Holy Ghost. It's a lifestyle. It's a growing in God's word, being a disciplined one daily. Amen. And this is the real walk. Amen. So I want to encourage you to continue to plug in, reach out as needed. Amen. And that we all give glory unto God as a, as a living sacrifice. Amen. God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah.